You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Humour in the Bible Book 3 Leviticus Humour in the Bible is quite often sharp, sarcastic It's very often like that when it's wielded by the prophets cutting to the bone Their surgery is very seldom keyhole surgery Listen to Ezekiel chapter 6 verses 3 to 5 And I will destroy your high places, your altars shall become desolate, and your incense stands shall be broken, and I will throw down your slain in front of your idols. I will lay the corpses of the people of Israel in front of their idols, and I will scatter your bones round your altars. You wouldn't think that Leviticus could outdo that, would you? But it does. It says almost exactly the same thing, in far less words, and with far more sharpness, in Leviticus 26.30. This isn't nice, gentle humour. I warn you. Leviticus 26.30 I will destroy your high places, and cut down your incense altars. I will put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. I will abhor you. Doesn't sound very funny, does it? But just to get a feel for what it sounds like, Here's the Hebrew. Vehishmati et bamotikem, vehikrati et chamonikem, venatati et pigrekem, al pigre gelulikem, vegaala nafshi et kem. It's nicely alliterative, but with a sharpness that suggests the underlying sarcasm. Which, of course, is on the surface with the comment, I will put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. Picturing those images which are supposed to represent superhuman powers as dead. But then the sarcasm and the humour is scarcely buried in Hebrew. In the word for idol, gilul, in cuneiform sources, the word pair Ilanu, gods, and Elemu, ghosts of the dead, appears quite often. And so, putting together the, the Gilule and the corpses may make really good, if humorous, sense. And then there's all the word plays going on with this word Gilul. Gilulim, idols, sounds very like. Elilim, gods, which in its turn sounds like Elil, weak. But here, with Gelul, it's worse. Because although Gelulim is used in many places through the Bible to talk about idols, not just here, but in 1 Kings 15, 12, and numerous times in Ezekiel, it's derived from the Hebrew word Galal, which means dung or excrement. So these gods, carcasses, are also excrement. I told you the humour wasn't soft or gentle. It's hard and it's harsh. It's sharp. And just like the prophets, Leviticus here is trying to Bring the point of its spear home to its hearers. And notice how it ended. The NRSV has the rather insipid, I will abhor you. For Vigala nafshi et kem. Gal, too, is an interesting word. Very like the word for redeem, but also especially in the feminine form we have here, very like the word for the exiles, the Gola. So, more puns going on, quite possibly, and strengthened by not simply saying, I will abhor you, but saying, my soul or my spirit will throw you away. Ga'al, cast you out, abhor have nothing to do with you. There is humour in Leviticus, but it's a sharp humour, humour that cuts like a knife. But then, 
human idolatry needs to be cut out fit the humour to the crime gentle no punny yes